In this Star Wars Outlaws news update video, we will be taking a look at a brand new gameplay clip. Plus, we have some incredible new gameplay details that have just been confirmed and more. But before we do get into everything though, make sure you do subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any future news updates on Star Wars Outlaws. So this week has been absolutely fantastic for the game. We have seen a brand new trailer with tons of new footage, received a lot of new details regarding the actual plot as well as gameplay, but even more has just come to light. Now let's start off with this brand new gameplay clip. So this is coming from Ubisoft's official social channels and it is to promote the Castle Runner pre-order bonus for the Speeder and Trailblazer, but it reveals a bit of new cinematic footage. Specifically, it is set on Tatooine just outside of Mars Eisley. So we can see here, Kay is racing on her speeder up this path and in the background, we can see the settlement that is pretty much Mars Eisley. Everything in the distance is what you'd expect to see. There are moisture evaporators, so many buildings, banthers, as well as small creatures closer to the camera. The camera then pans to this other section of Tatooine, which looks to be another settlement. And we have the Trailblazer wearing the Kessel Runner skin and then the Speeder as well, wearing that Millennium Falcon inspired skin as well. Next up, we have so many new details about the gameplay and how the game works. Honestly, some of the stuff they've revealed is really, really exciting. So we actually have an account from people who played the game recently at Massive Studio. Game Informer, the magazine, went to the studio to have about 90 minutes hands-on time with the game and they've been able to reveal lots of new gameplay details. Plus they have done an interview with Julian, the game director. Here are the key new bits of information that have been revealed through Game Informer's new coverage released yesterday. So contracts can be picked up at cantinas, whatever planet you're on, and these contracts can influence your reputation with the various crime syndicates. But there will also be side adventures with characters that you meet in the streets of settlements and things like that. You don't just have to go to a cantina, but you will just find an NPC that wants to talk to you. Supposedly, the living world is really, really awesome. It's very dynamic as well. There will be tons of things to attract your attention. You don't have to do these things. It's all optional, but they really want to try and make these things rewarding to do. They really did talk about just how dynamic the game world is, which is exciting to me because I really felt like Jedi Survivor was getting there, but at times it wasn't quite what the open world game that we wanted this game really sounds like this is the open world we have been waiting for, an actual lived-in dynamic world that feels real. So Julian, the game director, has revealed some of the more dynamic events that we can see in the game. So you might just be traversing across one of the various planets, and you might find in the distance one of the crime syndicates fighting against an Empire squad, or even two of the crime syndicates fighting against each other. If you want to engage with these battles, you can do just that, and you can pick which side you want to help out, or you can just leave them alone to let them face off. According to the people at Game Informer that went hands-on with Outlaws, they specifically say this game feels very distinct from any Far Cry game, and it doesn't even feel like a traditional Ubisoft game. It feels far more unique. It just feels like the next Star Wars game, and they weren't even really thinking about who developed it. Obviously, it being just a traditional standard Ubisoft game has been a heavy criticism, especially one brought to people's attention over the past few weeks based on the hatred towards previous Ubisoft titles, but those that have actually gone hands-on with the game say it isn't really like one. Brian, one of the people that did go hands-on, said that he directly asked Julian if there are towers that you climb in the open world to unlock parts of the map, a trope that is associated with Ubisoft open world games. Julian specifically said there are not. How it works is the fog on the map will just dissipate wherever you go, much like, say, Grand Theft Auto V. So the entire map is going to be open to you, aside from some territories that you'll have to unlock through working with various syndicates. But for the most part, the actual open world itself, you can just go on your speed or wherever you want. Nothing is going to be locked by a tower. Next up, let's talk about an example mission given by Julian. And 
it's definitely something that we haven't heard before. So the mission is set in Mirogana City, which is the main settlement on Tashara. Basically, one of the Hutz's hired guns will contact you in a cantina and needs you to disrupt a smuggling route of pirated rubber garner hide. So this is leather of one of the new animals created for the game. The pikes are running this hide, but the huts want you to go and disrupt them and this trade. Now you can choose to disturb it for the huts and that will obviously help your reputation with the hut cartel. However, you will actually get an offer in the middle of the quest to hand over the hide to Crimson Dawn. So this quest will actually affect your reputation with three of the four syndicates because if you choose to help out Crimson Dawn, it will increase the reputation with them, but reduce it with the Huts because you didn't complete what they asked you to do, and you also took it out of the hands of the Pike Syndicate, so it will reduce reputation there as well. So that part of the game is going to be very interesting to see how we can manage all of these factions. In terms of how Miragana City is actually structured, some people might be thinking it's going to be a big, massive city, open world, and it's just going to be huge. But it isn't. It's more of a compact, dense city. So there is tons of content, apparently. Just so much going on in this smaller section. They didn't want it just to be somewhere where you have to keep walking, going all over the place to do things. It's compact. It's an underworld. This is where all the dodgy people are hanging out. It is what you'd want out of an underworld in Star Wars. But it isn't just going to be going on for endless and endless amounts of time and distance. It's just a compact and dense location, and it looks cool. And in my opinion, density is better when it comes to games. You just get more of a sense of realism. Another thing we've learned about the syndicates are whereabouts they're actually stationed. So with the Pikes, they are mostly based on Toshara. Then the Ashiga clan are based out of Kijimi. Zeric Besh are on Kanto Bight, and then the Huts are on Tatooine. But you will also find their presence elsewhere. However, you'll find Crimson Dawn all over the place. They don't have a specific planet that they are hiding out of. One of the traversal mechanics is going to be your speeder. That will allow you to just go absolutely anywhere on the various planets. Water, land, whatever. This is your ticket to go wherever you want, faster than walking or running. Supposedly, the speeder gameplay feels good in the hand on the controller, according to the Game Informer people that went and played the game and actually checked out the speeder gameplay. We also got some more information about the more dynamic events, so you might be passing through an area that has an Imperial checkpoint, and if you run through the checkpoints, the Empire will come after you, they will try and stop you, or you can be polite. You will also come across shipjackers and pirates on the road that will try and rob you. There is also radio chatter when you are riding your speeder. An example of the radio chatter heard from the hands-on by Game Informer is that there was, say, an Imperial drop of equipment and such happening in the area. You can head on over and take those for yourself, or you can just leave it if you don't want Imperial trouble. The reputation that you build up with the various syndicates and the Empire affect living world events. An example given to us is that if your rep is good with the Pike Syndicate and run into an ambush set up by the Pikes, they may let you pass. If you help Crimson Dawn out in a skirmish with the Pikes, then it will affect your reputation with both. It'll go up with Crimson Dawn, but down with the Pikes. Another example of a mission that could happen is, say, you will be asked to steal a part from Crimson Dawn or the Pike Syndicate. If you have a good reputation with Crimson Dawn at this moment in time, it would allow you to get into their location easier, so it would make that task, stealing it, easier. But if you get caught, then it would reduce the reputation with Crimson Dawn. If you don't get caught, well, your reputation just does not take a hit. Reputation is only affected if you are actually caught doing a crime. So we have had a bunch of examples for the side quests and just the smaller bits of content in the game, but what about the main story, which they are calling the Golden Path, which will have the same story beats for everyone, it's just how you approach everything. Well, we actually have an example of a main story mission, and it is set on this Imperial Space Station. We don't have any information about it other than it's an Imperial Space Station. And you have been tasked to go there to steal info for the Pikes. And you can choose to give that information when you steal it to Crimson Dawn or the Pikes. So you don't have to just give it to the person that you were tasked to do. And this is a main story mission. Each faction will have territories and locations that will have a vault. And this will contain precious materials or objects. 
The only way to access this vault is through breaking in to get inside and stealing from it. If you get caught, obviously you are going to be found out and your reputation will go down. But if you don't get caught, then you're gonna be fine. Having a bad reputation will have assassins sent after you. They'll be hired by that faction with who you have got a bad reputation with. And all of these assassins have been newly created for the game. So they aren't say Boba Fett or IG-88. They also dismissed confirmation of any other characters. They said there would be some canon characters that we will meet, not just Jabba. However, these assassins are new characters. It's not just on the planets themselves that will have tons of points of interest but pretty much all of the planets have an orbit section, which as we've seen in the gameplay, you can just fly around if you want. You don't have to go to hyperspace if you want to do so. But all of these orbit sections have points of interest, things to do, battles to take place in, exploration. It's not just endless space. When you are infiltrating the various locations of the syndicates, you will have a lot of choice deciding whether you want to do this very stealthily or just completely going guns blazing. And early into breaking in, let's say you haven't really done much of the damage or things like that, they will just escort you back out of the premises, especially if you, if you haven't done anything too bad. There is also a last known location mechanic, so, so this will give you an idea as to where the AI are actually looking, where they think you are, so that will help you navigate around better with the stealth mechanics. You will also be able to mark enemies on your binoculars so you can keep tabs on whereabouts they are. Another thing I have from Brian who went to play this game, he said he did confirm that Amelia Clark is not portraying Kira in the game. So it might look like her, but she won't be voicing her character from Solo, a Star Wars story. It will be someone else. Typically what happens is if there is a standard voice actor used by Lucasfilm in previous projects, they will be used. So the forces of Destiny voice actor will be used probably if I had to guess. I would highly recommend checking out all of the coverage from Game Informer. It has been absolutely fantastic, whether it be the new screenshots, the new written article full of details, the hands-on impressions, the interview with Julian. It's all great. I'll leave it all linked down below in the description below. Comment below your thoughts on anything I've talked about in this video. I'd love to hear them, so be sure to let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like to help support the channel. Subscribe so you don't miss any future Star Wars Outlaws videos. If you missed any of my previous videos, click on the playlist on the screen right now, and I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.